Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and this was a request by Aiden Boyer. And if you'd like to make a request or support me on Patreon, go here for more info. And uh, I'm just gonna start this off by saying I, I don't, I don't necessarily hate this song. One could even say I kind of dig it. Hell, one might even say I, I even kind of like it. But if I'm being completely charitable, I'd probably say that I love this song, and I don't care what anyone thinks. It's a dope beat. It's a song that, in a way, represents my heritage, and uh, and uh, th th there's people rapping on it, and they're uh, they're certainly okay at it. All right, okay. To be honest, the only thing that really makes the song work rap-wise is Travis Scott. I swear to turn Atlantic, night calling in a phantom. I mean, night crawling in the phantom? That's just a cool ass phrase. No idea what ice water turning Atlantic means. Like your ice water turned into the Atlantic Ocean? Or, or, or maybe, like, he, he's got enough ice to fill up the Atlantic? Or or maybe he's just shouting out his record label and didn't really consider if it contextually made sense or not? Well, maybe he doesn't need to. Maybe he's shouting out a label that's allowed them to flourish as artists by letting them have complete artistic freedom. Just remember, no guns, no drugs, no violence. Uh, okay, never mind. Excuse me. Could you come down here for a second? Could you do me a favor? Yeah. Could you get the fuck out of here? Whoa. We interrupt this lyric breakdown to figure out what the hell's going on in this video. Uh, first off, what's up with that intro? Just remember, no guns, no drugs, no violence. Don't blow my fucking budget. Is, uh, is the ice water drying up in the Atlantic over there? And, yeah, I know that probably didn't make sense, but neither does the original lyric. You know you don't know what it means either. And I've been on the internet trying to officially confirm if this is, like, real or not. But, uh, at the end of the day, I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, part of the point is to make you wonder if it is real or not. So, in that case, I guess I'd rather have the little bits of entertaining insight into the work schedule of a music video then the run-of-the-mill typical stand in different locations and throw money at the screen while hot chicks shake their asses boilerplate bullshit that this was originally probably gonna be you know real or not as i look at that shot all i can think of is the executive producer who's probably not getting his deposit back on that dodge charger wait travis scott directed it but was it john man look at motherfucker doing it you know what? Doesn't even matter. Let's get to the track. So what's the song actually about? Well, Offset brings up being a zombie at one point, and since Kodak Black is Haitian and the folklore of zombies dates back to Haitian and West African roots, many assume the Z's in the song title are a nod to the cultural background. But of course, in those traditional versions of zombies, they're talking about someone rising from the dead. But being a zombie in this context is, well... Pop pill, do what you feel, I'm on that zombie. Hey. It's about being absolutely shit-faced. Like, you're so high on some shit, you just feel brain dead. I be sipping on lean, trying to keep balance. Hit that Z-Walk, dick it with my Reebok. Okay, I feel like I could use a second take, but, but you get the idea. That's what he means by Z-Walk. It's a euphemism for the stumbling around you do when you're drunk or stoned off your ass. And after that line in particular, it's probably relevant for me to say that I'm not the, uh... Biggest fan of Kodak's flow. Pull up in a demon on guard. Looking like I still do fraud. So, I'm just gonna come out and say it. His voice sounds like a colicky baby that's crying itself to sleep. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I can listen to Danny Brown and enjoy it, but I just can't deal with this all the time. Maybe that's Maybelline, she say. Maybe that's Maybelline. Yo, uh, I think dude might actually be a zombie. And I'm not alone here. There are multiple videos on YouTube of people uploading the ZZ song without Kodak Black's part. And I think it's just because his voice is just too jarring, man. It sounds like he's rapping through a mouthful of honey. But fortunately, some record exec out there made sure Kodak's biggest song included him on it the least, opting instead to give huge chunks of time to Travis and Offset. And aside from Travis's ghost face killer like free association bars at the beginning there, there are also themes about keeping friends out of prison and showing them a better life. In the middle of the field like David Beckham, oh, all my niggas locked up for real, I'm trying to help them. Running out of dogs free, yeah, yeah. and we out in these streets, right. can you do it, can you pop it for me? And then of course there's Offset's verse, which, um, me mugging got me clutching, sh 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 yeah, and it stick right out of Russia. Like, you gotta know that the words clutching and Russia don't rhyme, right? I mean, I guess the first syllable of those words rhyme. I guess that's good enough. Well, considering their overall skill level, maybe it's appropriate. Like, are they good rappers? Eh, they're good enough. When you get that money, nigga, keep your heart. I'm sliding in a coupe and got no key to start. Yeah, that's right. He kept true to who he was, and look at him now. Well, minus those times he went to jail. Don't, you, you don't need to look at that. Okay, okay, maybe he's not the best example. Sleeping on the pallet, turn me to a savage. I'm a project baby, now I stay in Calabas. But, you know, 
a lot like this sticks out for me. Because a pallet in the south is slang for sleeping on, well, anything that's not a warm, comfy mattress, you follow? Like, it's a pretty direct message. Dealing with extreme poverty my whole life has made me a horrible person. I mean, you gotta admire the honesty. And this is in no way excusing the behavior that landed him in jail. If he did something that honestly violated someone else's rights as a human being, he should see consequences for his actions. But there's always context for people's horrible, horrible behavior, and I think lines like this kind of allude to that. In fact, he makes a couple allusions to his days as a credit card scammer. Pull up in a demon on guard, looking like I still do fraud. Baby girl, you just a fleeing, that ain't what I mean. Money busting out my jeans like I do skiing. And while I think that's some really scummy shit, I'm willing to bet a lot of the people in Kodak's situation did what they did because, well, when you grow up with nothing in your life, you get tired of just getting by, you want to get over. And unfortunately, that facilitates a culture of desperate survival tactics and a fostered sense of indifference to a society that always seemed indifferent to your situation. And while I can appreciate the little bits of characterization they add to the verses, it's it's not nearly enough to really save the song for me compared to the shortcomings that really detract from it being enjoyable. But I gotta admit, the playful melody and the hook still get me, so I give it a 3 out of 5. Well, that's the review. If you like it, please like, comment, subscribe, you know all that stuff we gotta say at the end of the video. Go to my Patreon if you want to support me there, get that Station Head app, and tune into my Rap Critic Station if you want to hear what I'm playing. And follow me on Twitter or Instagram if you want to know what I'm up to on the daily. Also, I gotta mention my new movie podcast with my friend Evan, View Askew and New, where we look at the filmography of Kevin Smith because... You know, why not? So check out all that stuff and I'll catch you next time. Peace.